But we're gonna start in a minute anyways, right? So it doesn't matter. Maybe. People are like, where's their sound? They say I have sound now. Hello, this is a test. Hello, this is a test. And they might be able to hear you. Hello, everybody, and happy Monday. Hi to everyone from around the world tuning in for this edition of Advig Together. My name is Ko Im, and I'm the community editor and flagship podcast co-host here at Adweek. Thank you for joining us. We have an exciting conversation today, but before we dive into it, uh, we wanted to remind you about our Adweek subscription so you can get unlimited access to our essential content and resources. Just go to the link adweek.com slash offer. Our guest was super personable. You may know him as a producer and award-winning artist. Um, he's also a philanthropist, and we wanted to check in with him on how he's doing in quarantine and how he's entertaining folks from around the world over the internet. Um, so here is our conversation. Please also comment on your with your reactions. Enjoy. Fantastical, imaginative uh, show, and um, it was incredible. They 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 sampled in. Um, crowd cheering and, and crowd response. So um, it looks like they're going with you, you know, like it, it was a really, really cool virtual experience. So that's like, that's the norm, right? And obviously you have like drive-ins and things like that, that are kind of inching, you know, towards like doing the IRL. But I, I think it's a bit too early for that now. Still, I think it, I think we need to get to that vaccine stage or you know whatnot but i think all of us artists are like we're just how do we get out there and play safely how like what do we do you know and, and it's it's like we're all wanting it like I, I you know i mean i like playing for my quarantine crew it's great <laughs> but like like seeing some new faces like jumping and, and getting all excited is, is you know the exciting part of djing and playing so many shows yeah, and, and it, in fact, for athletes, right, you know, they pump in fan noise, but it's not the same playing in an empty stadium. So I'm glad to hear that you felt a little bit of that simulated experience. Um, yeah. You know, what do you think, you know, brands and companies and producers can do to uh, continue to fuel that creativity within this entertainment space? Um, you know, where are you looking for for inspiration and what kind of conversations do you have as you know, uh, somebody really in front of people and even, you know, coming up with new ideas? I mean, I think like, you know, as far as brands getting involved, I, I, the, the, the big one is gaming, that whole industry. You know, everyone's gaming. Like gaming has gone up. Like not just gaming, but like viewing gaming. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the streams, like people watching um, like YouTube streaming on gaming. It's like, I think it's like the highest out of all the different categories is gaming. 
So people are watching gaming, that's for sure. Watching and playing. So um, to do, when you combine both worlds, music and gaming together, was what Fortnite did um, when I was able to perform inside Fortnite. Like, I mean, like they, they definitely disrupted the marketplace with that one. I, I think, um, you know, big props to them because like no one, no one's done that yet. No one's done like a live stream inside of a game, you know, especially as large as Fortnite, which is <laughs> basically the culture of the youth generation, you know? Like if you're, if you're like a, a tween and up, you're playing or even younger, you know, if you're, you're a kid and like toddler and up, you're, you, you're either playing Fortnite or you know about it, you know? So um, it, that was very cool to be able to do that. And I've done a, a, some other ones like that where it wasn't like gaming per se, but I worked with other brands and we did virtual sets and, and did Zooms. I think that's also a really cool uh, way to interact is seeing the zoom come in so you can like lo log into the zoom and you see like some someone dancing in their bedroom and i'm like <laughs> oh, what up Your shirt's dope. and like, i remember like at one point during one of my streams um you know someone got really very well got who got very excited and they, they just grabbed like a like i think it started out as a donut and he just donated himself i'm like yo you just donated yourself and then like someone's like like I could do one better and he grabs a cake from the fridge and like, I'm like three, two, one. And the guy like just cakes himself. And then like, it was like, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 people just ending up finding cakes and, and caking <laughs> themselves or whipped creaming themselves. And so that was like the most, that was great. Cause we broke that kind of that, that, that screen of being able to really get into each other's worlds, you know? Yeah. Uh, so the zooms, we're great. And I did that with, um, with Chips Ahoy. I did like, they, they brought in like, it was a virtual prom. That was cool. So I like, I got to DJ a virtual prom. So it was like a prom for like a, a bunch of kids that, that, that got in. So then like, I, I could kind of see them and, and they had like their get up on and stuff. And, you know, so like, like there are things that you could do like that, that are happening, um, that, you know, lift people's spirits, make people happy, you know, we're stuck in our homes and, you know, like we're staring at our computer screens and, and, you know, like music, art, gaming, all these things are, are like, these are things that are hopeful. You know, it's like, I think one of the most important things in this pandemic is the ability to, to, to imagine, to dream and like mm -hmm. think of new things, you know, Think about all the new tech that's going to be coming out because of yeah. the pandemic. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about like all these minds coming together, thinking about um, and putting all this research, research together to, 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 you know, have new measures brought up and uh, with new tech that, that makes it safer for us to be able to get back to, you know, what we love. I, I really believe and that, that the end of the year will be a, a change. I, yeah. I'm like hoping for it. As long as everyone just stays like, you know, bunkered down and safe and wearing the masks. I think it's so important to wear the masks. And like, I wear gloves too sometimes, you know, I wear gloves if I'm like gonna be, if I have to like charge my Tesla or something, um, you know, I'll wear a glove, you know, and it's like, just keep yourself as safe as possible. And then in a few months, I'm, I, I really believe with all this, people working away, you know, uh, on new tech, new research on hopefully new vaccine, um, you know, we'll, we'll start being able to do the things that we love to do. Yeah. You're talking about, you know, creative solutions, accessibility yep. and influence, you know, as you know, someone with your platform to keep reiterating that message is, is super important. I also know that um, you have the Aoki foundation um, and you've done, you know, campaigns that are not just um, entertaining, but, you know, also like one promoting, you know, a restaurant with Postmates. Um, and so yeah. really promoting local and business. Um, do you think that the charitable aspect of live events uh, will be more integrated and, and bigger perhaps? And as we have, you know, bigger continuing new needs in, in this, you know, new kind of normal? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going to digress from that a little bit, but like I just 
we, uh, um, we, I was on my Aoki Foundation call yesterday. It was interesting because the call was basically how do we fundraise in this time? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's like people's pockets are empty. Like people don't have money, you know, and like there's a lot of orgs that that need help, like you know, need funding, need uh, you know that kind of thing. But like one thing we can do is raise awareness. But like, how do we actually have that conversation, that the fundraising conversation? when we don't have events because a lot of the time for us, we would create these IRL events. And actually the last Aoki games, the last Aoki foundation was called Aoki games. And we had like these obstacle courses set up. It was really fun and interactive. And, um, and we raised a lot of money. We raised a lot, actually a couple hundred thousand dollars, um, uh, and made it a very fun, fun event that was educational as well, but you can't do that. So like, you know, it's, it, it, it all relies on, being able to communicate the message, being able to talk, you know, right into the camera, into into the, the, the computer screen. So um, it's not as compelling as, as IRL, right? So, um, you know, just trying to see what that what that looks like now. What does what does having a um, a charitable organization where you can help raise money for uh, things that are important to to the org? How do you do that the most efficiently? And um, I, I, this is it. This is basically it for the time being. So, um, yeah, I, but yeah, but like it's, it's happening still, but it's just, it's just like, uh, a huge reduction of what it could be. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you, we talk about, um, you know, gaps that we need to fill. Um, and, but also there's some positives coming out of, um, this time, you know, a lot of people reprioritizing, uh, reallocating, and also talking about different things um, and a lot more people kind of getting back, getting into creativity um, and opening their doors. So like TikTok, right? We get to see like what you're doing in your home and what other families are doing. And um, I love that aspect. Um, it's allowing more diverse creators to come into the space. And I think a little bit of the barriers are broken. Would you kind of agree with that? Yeah, TikTok is for the, the common person. Right, like you have other apps, other platforms that are made for like that. That that it's all about like who's got the biggest numbers, like who's who's the most famous in their in their space. And obviously, um, with music and with uh, music kind of being the, the like the guide, you know, like the bigger artists, you can see like their or sports too. Um, with tick with TikTok, it's it's like you just be creative. And then you could be like a Charlie or an Addison, you know? Um, and if you're consistent, you could, you could really have an influence by just, by, um, you know, advancing inside the culture of what TikTok's all about. Cause it is like a very insular world. Like you have to, you have to stay within the confines of how it works. If you don't work within that space. It, it won't, it won't become viral. It won't do its thing. So as long as you understand, like, the Gen Z uh, rule book. Uh, if you can really speak the language and you could do it, you could. You don't have to be Gen Z to be able to, to <laughs> have a network, you know. So That's I, good. You know, I'm, I'm having fun with it. I um, it's it's a it's a completely different way um, to engage with social media than any other platform. One hundred percent. Like with my other platforms, with Twitter, with Facebook, with Instagram. Uh, with YouTube, um, I wouldn't say Twitch, but with those main ones, um, it's like, I'm, I'm really, I just really want to promote, promote my music. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like my main thing is like, how do I get my music out there, uh, promote it in a certain way. Um, and, or, or the things that I put out there, like, let's say like this t-shirt, you know, like, like it's, that's for those platforms. Like what I create, I'm just trying to like get out there to people so that they know about it. With TikTok, you don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. really insular, like you said. Yeah. Um, how much do you think you'll be doing more live um, to to promote music and to to keep people entertained? And what are you looking forward to? Um, if hopefully twenty end of twenty twenty is a little bit of a turning point, what are you looking forward to? Where do you want to go? Uh, but first, how much more live will you be doing? Yeah, I mean, live like you're talking about virtual, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, virtual, like, I'm, I'm, 
I don't want to do it too much. You know, like I, I, you know, I don't have any plans to do a virtual set um, yet. I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out, you know, later on. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm sure I'll be promoting another virtual set soon. I just don't have a date on that yet. Um, and then uh, uh, next year, 2021, you know, it's all about like that vaccine. Like, we got to get that vaccine out there, um, flatten the curve in America. You know, I don't know the science behind all this, a lot of the stuff, but like <laughs> hopefully we get to that point where we can get back in the shows. Yeah. So 2021, where would be the first pl place you would get on a plane to if you could? Um, probably Japan. It's my favorite place. I, like, I need to go to Japan. I need to, I, I, like, I miss it. It's so, it's so uh, culturally, the food, the people, the fashion, the music. I'm working with some Japanese artists now, which is exciting. Um, yeah, the art. I mean, everything about Japan I love. Yeah, yeah, I was supposed to have Japan on my calendar, but that no longer happened. But one day again, <laughs> one day again. Um, yeah. Steve, any last words? No, no, thanks for, uh, thanks for interviewing me and I appreciate it. Yeah, we really appreciate having you on and um, we look forward to all the, the other content that you create. And um, like Steve said, wear a mask. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, please. Welcome, Steve. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I and thanks again to Steve for speaking with us on Friday. What a nod to creativity and this time. I also want to get, give a brief shout out to our segment producer, Nick, and our live producer, Josh, today. Don't forget that these are weekly conversations, Mondays at 12 p.m. Eastern on all of their platforms. Next week, we're going to talk to Jason White, the CMO of Cure Relief, on the future of cannabis. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe and go to adweek.com slash offer to gain unlimited access to all of our essential content and resources. Stay in the know with an Adweek Pro subscription. My name is Ko In, and thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.